Okay, we got room for all. Now, what's your name? Manuel. Manuel. Boy, Manuel is going to be a deep sea diver. Now, to talk in, we can put a big helmet over his head. You want to feel how heavy this is? Okay. Now, this is what Manuel is going to look like. So let me put this over his head like this. Oh, now, isn't that heavy? Now, when I hit him on the top of it, he can feel it. Do you like that? Yeah. Okay, let me take that off. Okay, you're going to be the deep sea diver, so we'll put you next to this right here. Now, this is very, wasn't that very heavy? Yeah. Okay, it's heavy on you, and the problem is he can't see behind his head. It's very difficult. So the problem with the big helmets, the fiberglass helmets are, you just have limited areas that you can move around. So all of a sudden, we have to develop some new masks, some masks that are lighter. So now we need another volunteer. Who, come on up. We'll have you come on up here and you tell me your name. Come on up. And who are you? Jesse is going to come up here. Now, what Jesse is going to do is Jesse is going to be a commercial diver. So she's going to put my Darth Vader mask on. Now, this one has a microphone inside it. It's big, but you can talk. Also, you notice these two little things on the front. These pinch your nostrils so you can exhale and clear underwater. Remember, the water has a lot of pressure onto it. If you've ever gone up in an airplane, you hear your ears pop, or you're going up skiing, and as you go up the mountain, your ears kind of feel funny until you blow out of them or swallow. Well, these pinch your ears, or pinch your nose, not your ears. <laughs> as they pinch your nose and you exhale, you hear that little pop, and then the divers can go deeper. So we're going to give you a little try on this. Now, this may mess up your hair, but your boyfriend will still like you. The water. Now, notice how light this is. We can see out of the side. The little red thing is the microphone on the inside. So what you can do is put this on right here, and that's the one that I used underwater. So what we're going to do is we're going to have everybody up here. I'm going to put this on. Okay. Okay, now everybody at once say hello. hello. Okay, so there's our divers at all the different types of masks. I'll be taking you on the dive today. I'll be wearing a full face mask that you see. The microphone built into it, toppled into my video system. And of course, through this microphone the connection, I'll be able to narrate and explain to you some of this unusual marine life that we see in this incredible area. So hang on to your hats for probably one of the best dives that I've ever been on. Yep, now about 60 feet into an area that we refer to as the first cut. The sea fan in front, you can see the divers making their first right turn and if you can look into the distance we have several gray reef sharks inquisitively that have come in when approaching the camera back the second one very very close but because of the wide angle lens it doesn't appear that they're that close to us you drop down into the skull hundreds of fish some yellowtail wrasse also extending in the area. Foreground, you're looking at a giant anemone, referred to as a carpet anemone. As we can see several of our divers with us in, going down, actually touching the anemone. The clownfish that you see here have an immunity to the normal toxic stinging cells, which are found in the nematocyst of each of the anemones. Okay, I'll move in a little bit closer to this anemone. You can see by moving the current in front how the end of the anemone actually moves up. That's the name carpet anemone. As a cloudfish, you can see the problem. View this as a predator. They actually move directly into the center of the anemone great defense mechanism that we see most of the clownfish throughout the western pacific adapting to i'm going to move down the wall slightly deeper depth show you a second type of coral 
closely related then to what we have in California waters. This is known as a sea fan, Gargonian coral. And because of the coloration, it's known as the golden Gargonian sea fan or coral. As I drop down a little bit deeper, another type of coral in front is a soft coral known as an octocoral. Look at the difference. Now we have a coral that does not have a hard calcium carbonate shell, but actually has a very, very soft, almost fleshy membrane holding the individual polyps together. Name octocoral, coming from the fact that there are actually eight octa parts then to each of the polyp tentacles. Oh, yeah.